Hi, I'm Caroline Dowd Higgins, and today I'm on location in Philadelphia at Insignium. Two amazing IU alumni, Bonnie Wingate and Ashley Tappan, are sharing their wisdom and expertise. So Ashley and Bonnie, two IU alumni here at Insignium, how did you first realize that you were both from IU? Mm -hmm. That's a great story. Yeah, it is. Uh, we have a conversation for relationship practice. It's a, yeah. it's a term we use here at Insignium to basically get to know each other. And I think that's where we discovered it, right? That's right, exactly. So in these conversations, uh, they're really designed to get to know the person not just their resume. Yeah. And so you ask things like, you know, where are you from? Where'd you go to college? Yeah. And uh, the minute, of course, we, we hit on, first of all, that we were both Hoosiers. Like, ah. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, bonding began. Yeah, that's okay. right. And then 16 years later, it's just evolved into a real oh. collaboration. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and we love, brilliant. I mean, we love that. We, we love playing off of the whole idea of both being Hoosiers. I, I don't know where everybody else went in the company. But That's true. They all they know where they know your Hoosiers. That's right. <laughs> where your cream and crimson cry on your sleeve. We well definitely have fun with it. That's yeah. a great story. Yeah. So, Bonnie, I know that you believe in the power of confidence and how it can really help one be successful in their career. What's your advice for someone who lacks confidence? Um, my advice would be for um, the person to get to know some people that they think are really confident. One of the things that I, I've discovered along the way. Uh, is that, that people that I see, whether it's um, I see them in a meeting, uh, maybe a CEO, or I see them uh, you know, in a video or something like that, and they look very confident, but then very often when I read about them and their own story, I find that they have the kinds of insecurities that a lot of us have privately, right? So I think um, for somebody who lacks confidence, read biographies, but get, or talk to people, ask questions, um, be willing to look at the fact that maybe everybody, you know, maybe you're not as far off as everybody, as you think you are from everybody else that you think is really confident. And then practice. Toastmasters is a great idea. Um, there are lots of ways that have a low threshold that you can practice in little bites where you can be successful. And then literally you build your confidence along the way. Brilliant. She's going to laugh when I tell you this, but... I would also practice being, like I would channel my inner Bonnie Wingate. Oh, I love that! <laughs> tell me, tell me! So I would, you know, I, I've always admired Bonnie and, and how she is in business and how she dresses and how she, you know, behaves as a leader. And so I would just pretend to be Bonnie when I was too self-conscious to be myself. I love that. Yeah, so. I think that's brilliant. And I bet that makes you feel good too. It does. It does. But I'll tell you what, it also reminds me of, of um, coaching when I was really early on in my career. And it was about choosing somebody that you know would yeah. have the right answer. Um, because you always, you always know, gosh, if I were so-and-so, mm -hmm. I would know exactly what to do. Mm. So if you put yourself just like you did, mm. um, and we've all got those kinds of role models, but yes, it makes me feel really good. Channel your inner body. That's, right. <laughs> okay, that's good it. stuff. That's excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Ashley, you're an athlete. Yeah. And how has being an athlete added to your transformational leadership? Oh, that's, that's great. I love uh, talking about that because I think that transformation really is about being able to see new possibilities um, not so much about changing somebody and I think being an athlete from when I was young I was able to consider new possibilities that I wouldn't have imagined around who I was you know to experience myself as focused and determined and strong and powerful and, and uh, that's helped me be a great leader and I think that's kind of what sports can provide for people they get to experience themselves in a way that they might not have imagined now the two of you have co-founded a program called fit to lead tell me more about that yeah um, well so we were looking for something that was um, a, a leadership area that wasn't already being addressed in, in, for women and what we noticed was that every senior executive had a fitness program. But it's one of the areas that women, and probably some men, but women in particular, put to the side. You know, everybody else comes first. And so we had that in mind, and then Ashley had done a triathlon 
that was specifically all women, all women, yeah. and forty four hundred. Four hundred of the thousand women racing were doing their first ever triathlon. First triathlon wow. ever. And, and wow. that's what I said. I said, "Wow, uh, this is really yeah. coming on." Yeah. And what if we could? Well, she comes well, in I on actually, Monday morning. Yeah. She had done the triathlon. She comes in on Monday morning, and we happen to meet at the front door. And she is lit up. Yeah. And, you know, she <laughs> can't wait to tell me about this triathlon she did. And in particular, these 400 women who it was their first triathlon. Wow. So that's really what was the seed of the whole thing. And I said I wanted to be a mentor. I wanted to find some way to be a mentor. And that just... Yeah. And, but it's, and then it was targeted at... Women who that this is the first time for them. Yes. Yeah. So Ashley designed a program that was it's a six month program. Yep. So and we recruit women out. to train for a triathlon, but it's really a forum for leadership development. Mm -hmm. So they get to you know really, as we were talking about with transformational leadership, consider these new possibilities like me a triathlete and then they do it. Right. And it's been remarkable. I mean we. There's a, a number of, of women that we know who are high-level executives mm -hmm. who've never done a triathlon before, so to watch the transformation of, over a period of six months with them has been so inspiring. And then Insignium has also sponsored a team mm -hmm. that's been hand-in-hand. -hand. So besides what Ashley's doing with the, the HBA program, yeah. Um, sh we've also had people from our firm, including somebody from Paris who flew over yeah. last this past June, and they sponsored and us all to do have a triathlon team, which was you know just a great experience for building our relationships with each other. So that was very yeah. cool. Good stuff. Yeah. So this can be a tricky topic, right? What's your take on failure? That it is essential. Yes! <laughs> I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Pretty much anything. Do you know, yeah. just uh, anything that you're learning, there's going to be a certain amount of failure that's mm -hmm. going to be involved in it. Um, and, and as I thought about this, first of all, I, I've spent my, at least part of my entire career, in sales. So it is an invitation to fail every single day. Right. right? And I fail way more times every day. People tell me no. Uh, more often than I hear yes. Uh, and then the one of the things though that I wanted to share with you is that um, I wrote a blog on leadership yes. and failing mm -hmm. this past year. And the person that I focused on is Sarah Blakely, who is uh, you know kind of my idol and anybody who doesn't know her, Spanx, mm -hmm. right? That's her company. Uh, as far as I know, she still owns the entire company, mm -hmm. has pretty much done the whole thing by herself. And she credits her dad, she credits failing, first of all. And that her dad, this is a quote from her, encouraged her and her brother to fail. Growing up, he would ask us what we failed at that week. And if we didn't have something to say, he'd be disappointed. And that changed her mindset. So that, to me, really sums up. Uh, and if we could just get people to fail more right. and learn from it, uh, I think we'd have a lot more success and, and probably a lot more innovation in the world. Love it. Love it. So, Ashley, I'd love to hear your take about risk-taking. Mm. Uh, let's see. Well, I believe in it. Good. <laughs> and I think if you're uh, not feeling a little fear now and then, then um, you're probably not taking enough risks. And I think it's important to see where your limits are. Um, I did a... I think we've talked about that I'm a triathlete, and I did a triath I do lots of triathlons during the summertime, and I'm used to doing them in really nice weather, and I recently did a triathlon, and it was in stormy weather. Ooh. And uh, so when I walked out um, of my home that morning, it was pouring rain, and to start out a triathlon wet, <laughs> yeah. you know, two hours before you go, and then to face, uh, we ended up swimming in 10-foot swells, so, um, you know, that's risky, but I was uh, prepared and I, you know, took a little check to make sure that um, I could be safe, but, you know, try this out and see what would happen and, and uh, it was great. I, and you conquered the challenge. I did, I conquered the challenge and, there, you know, there's nothing like taking a risk like that and then you have that forever. 
Uh, graduation season is soon approaching and there will be thousands of new IU grads heading out into the workforce. Mm -hmm. What do you wish you knew then that you know now that you are seasoned professionals? And by then I mean at the beginning of your career. Well, I, I wish I had known to um, reach out further. Mm -hmm. So to um, <coughs> look beyond my, what, sort of what my career path was. You know, you get into a bit of a rut. Right. So to, um, whether it's reading, talking to people, um, uh, having interviews, but doing a lot more research. I, I keep being surprised at all the jobs that I find that people do. I'm like, wow, somebody gets paid to do that? Yeah. And you mean interviews? It's amazing. Only new. Like going for like, lunch? Lunch yeah, is like people. Like information. Yeah. 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 But think some way to really expand what your horizon is mm -hmm. yes. in a big way. Yeah. Good stuff. Absolutely. So I believe in dreaming big in my life and in my career. How does that resonate with both of you? Mm -hmm. Um, yes, I do like to dream big as well. And um, my, actually, there's a couple things I'd say right away. Um, one is I want to be a philanthropist. Good stuff. So I, um, I have a lot of interests and a lot of things I love and a lot of passions that I, would, I really want to fund. So uh, that's one thing on my list. I'd really love to find a way to make enough money that I can be uh, giving it away. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. Ashley, how about you? Well, my father got me into acting when I was a child, and so I've been, you know, acting in little community theater. So I'd love to act more in theater. Good for and, you. And uh, I'd also, I married a, an Italian, and he, uh, I, it's like I picked the perfect guy because he has to live in other countries at some point, and so I'm <laughs> hoping that I'll get to live in another country and learn a new language. So those are some of my dreams. Great dreams. Thank you both for sharing. <laughs> The two of you really believe in playing the game, and by that I mean professionally, getting into the game. So what are your words of wisdom for those who are not quite in the sweet spot in their career? Well, I'll start. You chime in. Um, I think, first of all, playing, having yeah. it be enjoyable is critical or you're not right. going to have any fun. And I think that's important to remember. I do too. You know, no matter what stage sure of your career. Every day. Well, that's right. And, and you can feel that here. here. The, yeah. the energy is palpable here. You yeah, can feel it. you laugh a lot. And I think that that's important, the play aspect. Mm -hmm. um, then having a game out there in the future. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've had a lot of games where we've got some goal out mm -hmm. in the future that's bigger than we know how to do. Mm -hmm. we, we, around Insignia, we call them breakthroughs. Yeah. Right. And I would say um, increase your visibility. Mm -hmm. the, one of the areas that um, we keep hearing is not really well developed for people who have not advanced as far as they want in their careers is that they don't have a broad enough visibility. Mm -hmm. So they may right. be very visible to their boss, their immediate colleagues, but that's not really how you advance a career. Mm -hmm. So it's within your own company, but also associations and just get your name out there and you, as you said um, earlier, brag. Mm -hmm. Make sure people know what you're good at, what your strengths are. The art of humble confidence. It's so important. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Absolutely. I so appreciate your candor and being genuine and authentic with me. I want to get real for a moment because you're two tremendously successful women. Was it ever hard? Were there ever moments where you thought, how am I going to do this? Yes. Thank goodness. Yes. Tell me. Something immediately comes to mind. Okay. Um, prior to, I've been here 21 years, mm -hmm. but prior to coming to Insignia, I um, had started a company for someone in Wilmington, Delaware, and grew it 16 years, very happy, very successful, and uh, unbeknownst to me, the owner sold the company mm -hmm. as a surprise. And initially, you know, it was great, going to work in the new company, and you know, unfortunately, as so many mergers and acquisitions go, didn't work out that way. And so my job got eliminated. It was considered to be redundant, mm -hmm. even after 16 years of all the success. Um, and unfortunately at the time, I also was recently divorced and was really the sole provider for uh, two kids. My son was seven at the time and my daughter was 10. So it was a little bit of a bleak, you know, it, I, I knew myself completely as mm -hmm. that, the person who had started that company. 
So, because I'd been there for so long. So, how did you come back? Was it just sheer resiliency and grit and determination? <laughs> I mean, what was your what was your strategy? You know, it was talking to a lot of people. Mm. So, I um, I had I had after the third person recommended to read What Colors Your Parachute, <laughs> I thought, okay, fine, I'm gonna go get the book. I did that. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of informational interviews. I um, and then because I took so many actions. I had a happy accident, and that was that one of the owners of Insignium, of somebody that I knew from mm -hmm. a, a previous workshop, and when she heard that I my job had been eliminated, she said, do you want to come and interview? And I did, and that really started the whole, it really started the whole relationship 21 years ago, and, and, and that was five people at that time. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, again, another startup, and it was really, uh, yeah, doing the work and creating the company, and, uh, and also taking care of my kids because you can imagine, I live 28 miles from the, where we're located. So it was finding the, how am I going to build a network right. that was gonna be able to support my kids when I'm 28 miles away building a career. And, and it's, you know, it's, it really has been fabulous. But it, well it, in those years, it was a little scary. Thank you for sharing that and for being vulnerable. I, I so appreciate that. Ashley, how about you? You're resilient, you're tenacious. Well, how did you come to that? The mom subject, <laughs> uh, becoming a mom, I really had to dial back my ego. Mm. Um, and what I thought success was about, I think it was more, you know, I thought that I wasn't gonna be as successful because um, people didn't see me a certain way mm. anymore when I came back. And, and some things weren't important uh, that used to be important, and yeah. I wasn't willing to maybe put in the number of heavy hours right. that so I used value to or shift. something. Yeah, right. value shift. Priorities, yeah. And, um, you know, to my surprise, you know, being willing to, you know, take a step back and not, you know, and try other things and, and find out where else I could be successful and how else I could be successful in my work, I ended up being probably more successful um, after mm -hmm. I became a mom, so... That's it. That's good stuff.